Hey guys, still here and welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. Today is another one of the Naval Architect scenarios and this one is highly, highly creative writing. It is sent in by Black Knights and he already sent in a previous scenario last month and this one follows on that. The previous scenario that he was doing was Attack from a Giant, in which case I was a very small island nation that was being attacked by an overwhelming force, but my light cruisers and destroyers managed to make very quick work of the enemy fleet. This one is a follow-up scenario to that. So the story that I'm about to read you links back to the previous scenario. This is the situation in the harbor. And my nation was the Lufetians. Lufetians collectively have held their breath. The docks lay still. Their small fleet left the harbor for the first time as a battle group many hours ago. Wives cheered and kids waved flags goodbye. Now harbor defense guns are the only thing pointing out to sea. The quiet is only broken by explosions echoing in the distance. Periodic gasps are heard at the sight of several giant fireball explosions climbing into the sky, and gossip roams wild as to what they are. There is much despair as the first ship to be seen from the shore. The cruiser's fax appears to be nearly torn in two as a massive gaping hole is torn from her bow to amidships. She is still on fire and the city mobilizes to its aid. Sfax, though crippled, brought good news. We're massacring the enemy fleet. Euphoria overcomes the populace, even amongst the grim sights of wounded and dead being tended to. Over the next few hours, ships come back to the docks. The ship Pluton, having suffered as badly as the Sfax, shipbuilders murmur worried about being able to repair her anytime soon. One dock lay empty, as many families weep. La Galissonniere never made it home, and the Enfernet only found a handful of survivors. Cruiser Dagui Truillon is being hailed as the hero of the battle after landing over eight confirmed torpedo hits, sinking two battleships and a cruiser all by herself. Now, the next part is going to be from my perspective as the commander of the flagship uh, Enfernet, which is one of the cruisers that I had in the previous scenario. I was uh, being aided by another uh, one of the, the major powers, and we had that weird battle cruiser, I'm not sure if you remember, uh, the Levret, and Levret was a 9-inch battle cruiser, capable of doing 44 knots. Um, <laughs> and it was a really curious design. The commander of Levret boards our flagship Enfernet for a debriefing, survivor search, and to reach out to their admiralty. The captain looks me up and down and then quickly embraces me. He exclaims in a thick accent, You are Admiral Cuttlefish, yes? My bridge bursts out laughing. My first officer has fallen out of his chair, crying so hard. After my men fix themselves, one of my sailors steps in as a translator. Turns out our ally had named our craft Cuttlefish. Small, stealthy, but very poisonous with our tentacles of torpedoes. He meant to ask, am I the admiral, to, the admiral of these Cuttlefish? But I have a feeling Admiral Cuttlefish is going to stick. It's got 17 letters, and at least it's a number I like. I live with it. Many questions were answered, thankfully. Like, how'd you get her so fast? It's met with, well, the Levrette can do 44 knots. Why are you low on ammo? Why put 9-inch guns on a battlecruiser? It's met with, we specialize in intelligence and raiding protected merchant fleets. Perfect guns for the task, and we were on our way home from a raid. The captain sighed, Admiral, my country is losing this war on the sea. The enemy we faced was the antiquated reserve fleet of our now common enemy. Their admiral and crews were some of the most inexperienced in the whole navy. I'm guessing they were assuming they were going to brush your coastal defenses aside. This was a bombardment fleet, and with transports they were carrying an invasion and occupation force of about 20,000 marines. It's the expected launch pad to an invasion of my homeland. My orders were to distract or deter this invasion. We weren't expecting overwhelming victory in this battle. You have changed the war. Your fleet of 80,000 tons just sunk 400,000 tons of enemy ships. We agreed to refuel his ship as a thank you and let him contact his homeland through our State Department to give them the news of the victory, the loss of their own ships, and the list of survivors. As he parts ways from our decks to board his own ship again, my first officer yells from the bridge that I have an emergency phone call. Back at Naval HQ we are now. A sonar operator bursts through the door. They're not going home, they're splitting up. Radio interception confirms. Their orders are now to bombard our towns. 
Officers immediately begin notifying the small Coast Guard fleets and rings up the Enfernet. The Rear Admiral stares at the war room table wondering, do miracles happen more than once? Our Coast Guard gave up torpedo ammunition to support the main fleet, are older, and only have a cruiser flagship and three destroyers. So, that's the backstory. That is quite the backstory. I really like the part about how the battle was perceived from the harbor, from the home front, if you will. It's not something that people include in the scenario, usually. Now, in this scenario, I only have a light cruiser and three destroyers, and I'm taking on a heavy cruiser, a light cruiser, and two destroyers. So, numerically, we are even, but that heavy cruiser against my light cruiser could pose a problem. My objective is to sink both the heavy cruiser and the light cruiser. The destroyers won't be able to survive the brutality of the sea alone, at least we hope so. The loss, or at least loss condition, is if I, uh, all of my ships are lost. The outcome of this scenario will be multiplied by times 3 for each cruiser that got away, doing a similar engagement. Your surviving ships have become multiplied for the final standoff. So it is very much in my advantage to ensure that these guys survive, because the next follow-up scenario that uh, Black Knight is going to send in is going to use these ships again. Now, anything else that I should know for the scenario? Um, well, the country is not industrialized. Tech is plentiful, but material is not. When I chose to have increased torpedoes and a lot of torpedo tubes in the first battle, I took them from my Coast Guard. The light cruiser that I'm going to build here has the 10,000 ton limitation and can have zero torpedo launchers. So, very much hoping that the destroyers are going to take up the slack, because I cannot use anything but guns on the light cruiser. Black Knights also says, I've balanced out the doubling of the Coast Guard statement into the number of destroyers that you can have across the three engagements. So, this uh, next part of, or well, this part of the scenario is going to be very important. I need to design a light cruiser, 10,000 ton displacement, starting range of 8,000 meters. That's going to be critical. Because with that, I might be able to mount smaller, faster firing guns, which, thanks to the lower range, can actually penetrate the enemy. Let's get to designing. Now, modern light cruiser, uh, Marseillaise at 10,000 tons. Tech is plentiful, uh, materials are not, and this means that the torpedo launchers are a no-go, but for the rest, I can probably kit out the ship as much as I like. So let's ensure that she's going to be capable of dodging enemy torpedoes. <clears throat> 403 meter turning circle is still quite a lot. But I'm hoping that it'll be enough. Uh, and of course, if it has to be done, I could slam on the brakes. And just throw the ship into reverse, dodging torpedoes that way. Now putting any kind of a citadel <laughs> on the light cruiser. Uh, maybe more of a bit of a running joke than anything else. But let's see. Put on the main tower. Put on the secondary tower. And now the guns. Seven inch guns are the biggest that I can field. At let's say seven and a half thousand meters, I can penetrate 8.1 inches of armor. If I go for super heavy shells, that goes up to nine inches of armor. Uh, that's with lidite, which just does flat out more damage, but also has a substantial risk of your own ship going up. And considering that I'm a light cruiser, my magazines are even more fragile than normal, so I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go for something that has less of a flash fire chance, and that's going to be uh, TNT or two powder. These have extra shell pen. These have a little bit of extra shell pen. Uh, and these have 1.5%. So let's go for this. Putting my shell pen at 11.1 uh, inch. That is very substantial, at least for a light cruiser. It makes me think that I might be able to do it with a 6-inch. These things reload in 26 seconds, these in 18. And if I go for auto loaders, it changes to 11.5 or 16.5. These are Mark... Uh, they're both Mark 4s. Okay. Uh, let's go for 6-inch. Let's go for triple barrel to make up for the lack of torpedoes. I'm just going to throw it a whole lot of shells. One thick funnel should be able to do it. And engine efficiency 100. No, that's not good enough. Let's go for balance boilers anyway. Okay, 2,000 tons to do with as I please. Uh, a bit of barbette armor would be nice. 
And also some guns to deal with the destroyers that are going to be fielded against me. How many more guns could I put on here? I could put on one more turret. Hold on. This thing is pretty high up. If I could get a small barbette... Ah, it's not quite going to be super firing. I was really hoping that it would be, because that would make it very nice to just have another turret over there. But this is not going to fit, so I need to move this one forward. Move this one forward. You need to stop complaining. What? Is that barbette still too close for you? Come on now. Remove that. This is as far forward as I can put the barbette. <laughs> Gotta get creative. It works, but it's not great. No, we're just gonna have to go without the barbette then. Uh, put a 6 inch over there and a 6 inch over there. What I could, however, do is split the ship up. So split the main superstructure and make sure that I get a bit more room in between. Not sure if I could fit another barbette over there. No, I can't. That's unfortunate. But I can put another... Oh, no, not side mount. I can put another main triple... Come on. What? No, I want you to admit... Oh, it's snapping! It's not a side-mounted gun. It was just trying to snap to a position. So it's a bit of an unusual design. But doesn't make it any less functional. Unfortunately, the 6-inch turrets are too big to sit next to the superstructure. But the 5-inch... No. Even the 5-inch single barrel. I think the turrets are all as wide... So that would have to be 4 inch. Oh, come on. Does that also work with 5s? No. Okay, fine. We'll use 4s. 4 inch guns at 7,500 meters can penetrate 4.3 inches of armor. And of course, the closer you get, the more powerful they become. Now, since the game now tries to orient these things outwards, I'm going to have to manually deploy them. Why is my starboard weight of set so bad? There we go. It was that turret. It was, I think, positioned too far inward. Okay. 8,500 tons out of 10. I have a small four weight offset issue. So if I want to fix that, I would have to put on more guns. Uh, secondary threes. No. Is this for the twos? Ah, the wings are for the twos. Okay. Um, let's go for, oops, not for that. Bit more barbettes. Range is not that important, I think. I wonder how useful speed is going to be. Because it would allow me to get faster, or well, closer to the enemy cruiser faster. But at the same time, it means that my turning circle is going to go up. Which is not something I'm necessarily a fan of. Hang on. How far can I put this thing back? Because I think I might be able to field another six. Work with me here. Yeah. Look at that. That is a pretty heavy firepower section for a light cruiser. That's 12 six-inch guns. No, sorry, 18 six-inch guns that they can bring to bear. My aft weight offset is not looking great, though. 3, 2. Can you move further forward? Yeah, a bit. Now it's 8, 3, forward. 3, 1. Point 0.7. Here. This is where it needs to go. Now, it's an unusual setup. But if I can do a broadside run, I can get a lot of damage out very quickly with an 11.5 second reload. So, in order to turn those things fast, we're going to have to go for electrohydraulic turrets. Makes them a bit heavier, but it should do. Coincidence rangefinders to ensure that they aim faster. Especially useful for shorter engagement range. And armor-wise... Mm. 
you could argue that the belt's gonna get pinned anyway. Oh. There, I have a six inch armor belt plus 110%. I think I can, can I max it out? Wow, really? Let's go for a bit more deck armor, although it doesn't really require, well, it's not really that required in this situation. Let me guess, you need to be a secondary gun? There you go. This is the triple two, this is the triple three. Triple three there. I might not have torpedoes, but that doesn't preclude me from doing a lot of damage with guns. Especially against smaller targets. Is there anything else I can upgrade? No. Generation 1 radar is maxed out. Torpedoes, no. That's maxed. Anti-flood 3 is... Oh, it's 5 tons too heavy. There you go. 1.9 inch deck extended. Right. Marseillaise. Sorry, Marseillaise. No, Marseillaise. <laughs> Damn it. Okay, let's see if the ship can take on a heavy cruiser. At 8,000 meter range. Now, I have quite a bit of faith in the light cruiser, but I don't know how well my destroyers are going to help. I'm going to be relying quite a bit on their assistance. Thankfully, they do come with torpedo launchers. 22 inch. Um, not fast. But still more visible than I would like. I want all of you guys to throw launchers, unless I tell you to start launching. That heavy cruiser looks like a big dude. Oh no, they don't have any shortage of torpedo launchers, do they? Torpedo launcher, torpedo launcher, tor that's 12 torpedo launchers. Per side. Plus 9... Nine nine inch guns, fifteen five inch guns, four two inch guns, and twenty eight two inch guns. Hello. The Chinese mean business. This is their destroyer, torpedo tubes, port and starboard, and midships, and another one on the stern. And this is their light cruiser. Lots of guns, no visible torpedo launchers. That's... That's 18 6-inch guns as well, but on top of that, they got 30 3-inch guns. And I thought I had a fairly decent amount of firepower. Alright, I'm going to target the light cruiser first. To ensure that my DDs are going to have an easier time getting to the heavy cruiser. They're at 9 kilometer range. It's uh, Bison, Fanfare and Basque. And these are going to have to work pretty hard. Uh, you're coming my way, yes? Yes, you are. Do I sacrifice a destroyer to go and have a go at that heavy cruiser or not? No, not yet. Let the light cruiser work first. Survivability? Oh, not great. Ooh. That's really not great. Look at the Marseillaise is doing some work. The six and the threes are going off against the light cruiser. Range six and a half. Accuracy not great because I'm at a pretty high speed, but so are they. Identification is already 30%, even though we've just started. But with an engagement range this close, it's probably not going to take me a long time to see what's what. They're already flooding, and they're flooding badly. Maybe I can get rid of that light cruiser real quick. Yeah, this guy is going to have a very brief lifespan. The heavy cruiser is turning away. Come on. Sink it. Why don't you stop firing? Is your solution that bad? 
Wait. Who is torping? Fuck's sake, I told you guys not to torp. I guess I only had one ship selected at that point. So you spotted torpedoes. Would you like to inform? There we are. Hmm. If luck will have it, I might be able to do damage against the heavy cruiser with one of those torps. But it's a stretch. Alright, Marseillaise, we're gonna take the lead. Looks like that light cruiser is... Well, they, there we go, the Bengbu. Minimum bulkheads. Those six-inch guns need to die, because then the DDs can have a, well, a slightly safer time approaching that heavy cruiser. It's still not going to be comfortable for them at all. Because it's too heavily armed. It's an unusual design here with the turrets amidships, but I think it can just work. Identification 66%. We're still not there. Bangbu has her stern flooded, but the rest is fine. I've done 209 points of damage versus 21 of theirs. It looks like the Bengbu is targeting a destroyer, but is either unable or unwilling to fire. Yeah, she's turning too fast. That's why she's not able to bring her guns to bear. My chance to pen? 37% only. And that's with those high-end sixers? Really? I thought it was going to be better than that. DDs are still fine. For now. Come on, buddy. I need you out of my way. We're firing armor piercing, but this angle is just causing all sorts of ricochets. Switched eye explosive. Now, this light cruiser can do some work with all those six inch guns, but it does require that she's broadside. Which means that if I'm targeting or if I'm sailing directly towards the enemy, as I am now my chance to do damage is substantially reduced. But now, low ricochet chance, 4 kilometers out, 57% chance to pen. Steady course. Let's have a look at the heavy cruiser. The Hexi. Many bulkheads. Oh great, there's that too. 72 torpedoes. That's a standard compliment, but it feels like they have more than that. Um, a good combination of firepower from the fives and the nines, but they have Lidite too. They have Sonar too, so torpedoes, well, they're not completely out, but I would need a big distraction, read the light cruiser, to start absorbing fire so that the DDs could approach. That's risky. And we got a couple of DDs assisting. Not terribly worried about those. I do need them dead, though. Now, come on. I'm glad this light cruiser isn't packing all sorts of uh, torpedo launchers. As opposed to the heavy cruiser. Flooding. There we go. More, please. Smoke up. Come on. The heavy cruisers engaging the DDs. Guys, smoke. There's no time limit as far as I know. So this means that I can take my time, wait for the next smoke screen to be ready, and then see if I can charge down the Hexi, their heavy cruiser. Come on, Bengbu. Their anti-flooding capability is impressive. Anti-flood 3. With an AUX 1. So those two combined, leading to a pretty good capability of canceling or cancelling out any flooding. Switch to auto selector so that the smaller calibers use the high explosive shells. There we go, more flooding. This could get her. 
The DDs are still pitching with their four-inch guns, but their chance to... Well, actually, the chance to pan is quite good. There we go. Light crews are gone. Next target should be the Shuanglong. We still carry about 3,100 shells for the six-inch. Oh, that helps. A lot. Very good. Punch some holes in that destroyer, especially since she seems to be moving very slowly. Let me guess. The DDs were set up in a loose formation on a screening order for the heavy cruiser. That's really the only way that I could imagine that they would be moving so slowly. Now I'm going to tell my destroyers to go line abreast. Reason? We're going to prepare for a full charge on the heavy cruiser. Because they might be able to take down one destroyer or two, especially if I'm coming at them in a line. But if I engage with all destroyers at the same time, I might have a very good chance of getting there. That's the plan. Charge them in. Now, before I forget to mention it, um, in the Patreon program, not so much for the Naval Architects, but for the other tiers, you can now earn merchandise. If you are a, um, a Patreon supporter at the higher tiers for three months in a row, you just earn merchandise for free, as it were. So, if you uh, want to get any of those things, then link down below in the description. Of course, your su support is much appreciated, uh, merchandise or otherwise, but I thought, you know what? I'm going to make some Patreon exclusive merchandise. It's not something that you can get through the Teespring store, which I also have listed down below. So much for the commercial pitch. Now, it looks like the heavy cruiser has decided that the Marseillaise is a threat. She's not wrong about that. And she has decided to send all her torpedoes my way. So I'm going to do something potentially deadly. I'm going to turn hard. And see if I can avoid the torpedoes, but also not get hit in the broadside. Now this high speed turn means that the guns are thrown off target. So she has to reacquire. That DD is pretty sturdy. Actually. I need to keep a pretty close eye on the Basque. Because if she persists on her current course, she will get hit. So, detach. Manual control. How good is their chance to pen me? Nine inch guns. I imagine it's quite good. 22%. But that's at 7.5 kilometer range. I effectively have about 12 inches of armor. Which means that anything closer than 5,000 meters is going to be danger zone. Unless I angle heavily. Bosco, right? Yeah, she's fine. Okay, good. Um, I need you guys to slow down just a touch. Allow the Bosco to catch up. Here's that massive swarm of torpedoes coming in from both the cruiser and the destroyer, considering their angles. Now, I swung the ship around again, meaning that again I throw my guns off target. But I also dodge torpedoes. Jeez, are you studying to be a submarine? I thought you didn't have that much of a front weight offset. Come on. Range, 1.9. Get her. There we go, fire. That one just dink, uh, dinked, dinked, doinked, ricocheted. <laughs> <laughs> Ricochet up the hole. Range? Six clicks. We got smoke in 60 seconds. That means we're gonna go for it. Detach. Fanfare. Bison and Basque. Full ahead flank. Make yourself difficult to hit. There goes the Shuang Long. Sorry, Shuang. Yeah, Shuang Long. You may stop firing now. Can I pen that heavy cruiser? Barely. Great. Hit the destroyer instead. Smoke. 1 minute 40. My smoke. 10 seconds on the light cruiser. This is going to be a dangerous approach. 
unfortunately they're not very accurate stereoscopic five but no radar okay I think it's the no radar and the fact that they're targeting a small, fast target that's making them difficult. Or it's making it difficult for them to hit the, the bison. Go where the target's going to be. The reason why I'm charging in is because the heavy cruiser has a very good sonar system. They will see the torpedoes coming if I launch them now. If I launch them at short range, they don't get that kind of warning. So that's why. Got a torpedo in the water there. Hexi is still reloading. Ooh. Bison is in trouble. Smoke. Fanfare. Basque. Get ready. How good's your counter flood? Anti flood 2. Aux 4. You got a really good counter flooding system there. Look at them go. Holy shit. Now they keep targeting the bison, meaning that the fanfare is already at 3.7 kilometer range. Keep zigzagging. Let that heavy cruiser pay attention. You just launched a torpedo. There. At the fanfare. Looks like the uh, Shushang is going to be dead soon. Leaving me to engage the Hexi pretty much solo. Chance to pen is already 48%. Pretty damn good. Bison is flooding again. Crap. Who did you torp? The light cruiser. Shushang is dead. Range? Uh, two and a half. Fine. Torpedo if you can. Basque, get ready. Torpedoes away. Fanfare. Fanfare, get out. Hexi detected torpedoes. Her turning circle, however, is 550 meters. Yeah, you're fine. Bison is still flooding. I'm going to disengage you. But not before dropping torps. Big spread coming out of the, uh, the, the what's it called, the Hexi again. Starboard turn. Basque, smoke. Hexi's avoiding, turning to starboard. That's good, because that means that she cannot bring all of her guns to bear. Charge in. We got 2.7 kilometers to go. Effectively less, because I think at around 2.3, oh shit. At 2.3 or something like that, I might be able to start torping. No, sorry, the other way around. At about 300 meters I can start torping. With an excellent chance of killing her. Now my chance to pen with the light cruiser is still a mere 34%. But it is going up. I'm going to have to dance around another swarm of torpedoes here. So far I haven't lost a single ship and I'm not about to start. But I'm very concerned about all these DDs. Torpedo if you can. I cannot hold this course for long. Get those torpedoes away. Torpedoes away. Turn. Get out. Fanfare. I need you to turn a bit to starboard. Bison is alive. And fixed all of her flooding. The heavy cruiser is starting to take a bit of a beating from the lights. <laughs> I think the light cruiser guns. Yeah, those six inch guns are definitely pecking away at the enemy. She does have another torpedo launch. Come on, Basque. Marseillaise, range 3.7. Hexi is flooding. She's going to turn to port to evade the torpedoes. What turn do I need to make? Um, ricochet chance is very high. 86% structural, 96% buoyancy. Anti-flood capability? Anti-flood 2, AUX 3. That's a pretty potent combination to deal with water. 
I'm very concerned about how she's going to mold... Never mind. At her current angle, and especially the current angle of the Marseillaise, she can't pen her. She doesn't have the capability because I'm so angled. But she is forcing a turn because I have to avoid the torpedoes. Clever. Although there's probably not much clever about it. It's just the AI turning to launch her torpedoes at me. Fanfares, okay. Basque is pretty much healed up. Whoa, you're coming back into the fight then. The Hexi is trying to fire her s her nines, but can't. That's interesting. Come on. Could use a bit more damage. Right now I'm probably just bouncing. Fire aboard the ship. Damage to the torpedo launcher. Structural integrity, 83. Buoyancy, 100. She has once again found an interest in the Basque. The others? Bison is not fully healed up, but okay. Fanfare, I'm just going to put you on retreat because you don't have any torpedoes anyway. You do, and so do you. Marseillaise. Oh, that was risky there. Now, at this point, she's almost coming at me, which is good. Four and a half clicks. I need the Marseillaise to pose as a very aggressive ship so that the Hexi is not going to pay too much attention to the destroyer. This is the real threat right now. But I need them to think that it's the Marseillaise. Could you please sh keep your fire at it? Thank you. 18. Rudder damaged. Oh, that's perfect. And flooding. Charge. Charge. 2.6. Fire aboard the Bosque. Get ready. I'm gonna slam 4. 20. Oh shit, you're not reloaded! Oh no. No, 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 no. I didn't know you were not reloaded. 600 seconds. That's about 10%, so that's another 60 seconds. The problem is, this destroyer won't be here in 60 seconds. Oh, no. I completely fucked that up. The only thing I can hope for is that the boss has one of those... No. Shit. That was terrible. Okay, Marseillaise, it's down to you until you get assistance from somebody else. The Bison. So this light cruiser is going to have to keep bullying the Hexi and hope that she doesn't get a mouthful of torpedoes from the Hexi because then she'll definitely roll over and sink. 20 inch torps. I'll immediately see them, but I'll also immediately be hit as they're doing 59 knots. Flooding on the Hexi. It's another stern compartment. Come on. Those turps are not going to wait very long. Another flooding hit. Where are your stern guns pointing? At the target. Very good. Keep at it. Come on. Hexi's continuing to flood. Look at that list. Oh, that's not a list. That's... That's effectively sinking. Chance to pen me? Should be about a hundred at this angle. For some reason the game's not allowing me to see it. Fifty-fifty only? Okay. Oh, those torpedoes are gonna kill me. I'm telling you. Marseillaise, I need you to turn away. I'd rather dodge those torpedoes when I have a bit of warning, but right now I'm not going to get any. Bison is almost 8 kilometers out. There she comes. Torpedo launch in progress. Marseillaise, do a donut. 
Hexi is down to 20% buoyancy, but fighting to get back up. There's more. Dance, girl. Beat those torpedoes. Dance around it. This is going to get tight. But we should be fine. See, if I had stayed close to that heavy cruiser, she would have gotten me. She would have had me dead to rights, but now she doesn't. And now she's going to have to wait another 600 seconds to launch all of those torpedoes again. And all that time, I'm going to be hitting her with the 6-inch, which are still listing, or which are still aimed over the starboard. So we're going to punch a couple of good big holes in her. Yeah, she's getting a beating now. Her buoyancy is back up to 46%. But if it's down to me, that's going to change very soon. Twenty-nine percent buoyancy, flooding on Marseillaise. Twenty-two percent engines are damaged. That's good, meaning that she has far less chance to actually repair. I think we have her. We got her. Two destroyers survived, and the Marseillaise at almost well seventy-six percent. I'll take it. Whew. Okay, not a bad result. I thought that against that heavy cruiser, the moment that I saw it, I thought, oh, this is not going to go well. But we did it. Marseillaise came out on top against the heavy cruiser. Only one destroyer was lost, and that's because I was too busy micromanaging the heavy, or no, the light cruiser against the fight, or in the fight against the heavy, to actually see that the torpedoes weren't loaded. So that was a big mistake, and I paid for it with the loss of a destroyer. Now, I'm very much looking forward to next month when the next part of this scenario is going to come up. So, Black Knights, excellent writing, well done, really like the scenario, and I'm looking forward to the next part. Thank you guys for watching, I hope you enjoyed it too, let me know what your thoughts are down below, and I'll see you soon for the next one.